What's up, TD Nation? On this episode of the TD Nation Kickstart Show, we talk about working out while you're sick and intermittent fasting. What's up, TD Nation? Welcome to episode 16 of the TD Nation Kickstart Show. really can't believe I've been doing this for 16 weeks. Um, every week it seems like I'm getting to you guys a little bit later, and I apologize for that. It's supposed to be a kickstart show, meaning we're supposed to start on Monday so you guys can be fueled for the week. Um, but I've got so many clients I'm training right now, and I'm so busy that it's taking me a little bit longer. Um, my Mondays and Tuesdays are pretty filled up, so Wednesday is like the first time first day of the week I can actually get time to do this. Um, so, you know, I'm growing the, the fall beard, getting ready for fall. Uh, I'm actually on day 38 of perfection, perfect eating, not missing workouts, so I'm feeling really good. Uh, body is just overall feels great, no injuries, um, and the weight's going in the right direction, so I'm getting leaner, I can tell in the photos and on the scale, so that's all good. Um, if you guys have been living under a rock and haven't been participating in our TD Nation private group, um, we launched the TD Nation retreat site. So every year we do a TD Nation retreat where we all get together, um, have a great time, eat bad food. Yes, we're a fitness and health community, but uh, we like to get together and have fun and relax and, and eat bad food, um, run some races together. Um, you know, do some team building kind of stuff. It's it's so much fun. And this year, the retreat happens from April 28th, um, which is a Thursday, which is when the coaches will start to get into town. The coaches are going to do, you know, our little thing. And then all our TD Nation athletes get in town on the 29th. Um, so April 29th through May 1st will be the TD Nation retreat. It's in um, Champaign, Illinois. We built it around the Illinois Marathon. Um, and the reason we did that is because we have, you know, lots of people who are losing lots of weight and starting to um, get to a point where they can start tackling their first goals. And the Illinois Marathon gives us an opportunity to let you guys run a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, or a full marathon. So, you know, we have we have people who are at 5% body fat, and we have people who have 200 pounds to lose and everything in between. So it's this this uh, retreat and the Illinois Marathon is a perfect event because it gives an opportunity for everybody to um, reach their own individual goals, whether that's a 5K or a full marathon. So um, it's so much fun. Last year, you know, we had uh, Brian Beam who's lost 200 pounds. At that time, he had lost 146, I believe, um, ran his first 5K, which was incredible. We had Penny, who's you know battling cancer. She walked her five, her five k with a cane, and um, you know had, we had the best picture uh, from from that when she crossed the finish line. Um, it was just just an amazing amazing time to watch these people, um, you know, do things that they never thought possible, and they did it the healthy right way, and that's really really cool. So super excited uh, to see what the 2016 retreat holds in store. We've got 300 tickets. Um, if we sell out, when we launched the site, we sold a lot of tickets. So, um, you know, if we sell out of the 300, we'll we'll look into um, getting bigger venues and and expanding the retreat and making it even bigger. Um, we'll see how much work that's gonna take me. Uh, but um, but through the end of the year, the prices are staying the same. So uh, once January 1st hits, the prices are jumping. So make sure that you secure your tickets. Um, talk to people if you need roommates, if you want to keep hotel costs down, 
uh, but we made the tickets really, really inexpensive. You know, we're not making money off of this. We're just using it to just, you know, put everybody um, together and have a great time and give you guys as much fun as possible um, with food and beer and tailgating and uh, DJs and all that stuff. So we're going to have a great time. All right. Let's get into the show. I'm going to give some uh, shout outs after I go through. We got two questions today. Um, I only did two questions because I'm trying to keep it short. But the first question is, how hard do you work out when you're sick? And we see this all the time. And it's, it's amazing to me how much we see people who start to work out within the first week or two, they get sick. And I don't know if it's stress on their body and their immune system, you know, going down and, and just being more susceptible to injuries when you start adding all this new stress to your body. But we see a lot of people get sick in the first week or two of working out. Um, and then certainly, you know, in a 90 day span, uh, the, the chances of you getting sick are, are going to increase. And we see, you know, definitely within a year, somebody's going to battle that. And especially when you get momentum going and you've put together a good string of workouts and then you start to feel sick and you don't know whether you should work out. Um, and you might, sometimes you might push it in fear of breaking the cycle, um, and stopping the momentum snowball that you've created. And it can be a really scary thing to have this big, you know, momentum going and all of a sudden get sick and wonder, well, if I rest for a couple days, am I going to go back to my old ways? Um, so a lot of times we'll see our team members push a little too hard and then get even sicker because they didn't rest when they should have. So, you know, my advice when getting sick, if it's above your neck, meaning, you know, if you've got a cold or sniffles, um, you know, it's, it's okay to work out if you, if you feel okay and you just got a stuffy nose and sometimes that makes it better. Um, if you've got a headache, you know, I find that to be 50, 50. Sometimes, um, if it's, if it's a minor headache, sometimes when I work out, the headache goes away and I have a lot of clients who show up that I train who show up with a headache and after the workout, it's gone. But then sometimes you working out can also make the headache 10 times worse. So um, you know, I think it's a 50-50 shot on, on headaches. Um, I just, if, if I'm capable of working out, my headache's minor, and I don't really get headaches very much anymore since I lost all my weight, but I used to get them all the time. Um, if my headache's minor, I'll go ahead and work out, and whatever happens, happens. If I'm starting to feel like a migraine coming on, then I, I don't work out because I know that, you know, the likelihood of my headache getting worse is, is definitely going to be there, and I'm probably going to be in the bed with the lights off and, and in a lot of pain. So, um, if I feel a really big migraine coming on, I skip the workout. Um, now, if it's below my chest, meaning I got congestion, or below my neck, if I got congestion or coughing um, or fever, I definitely do not work out. That is your body telling you you need to rest um, and recover. So, um, you know, if I feel a fever coming on, I definitely don't work out either. Uh, it's just. I know that, that my body's under a lot of stress and my immune system's down and, and I need to recover. So I don't push it. Um, you know, one, two, even three days of being sick is not going to ruin any momentum that you've created. But pushing yourself and working out while you've got a fever could put you back a week and could make you a lot sicker. Um, so I would just take it easy on those days you don't feel good, on the days where you feel like, um, like you have a fever. All right, question two, does intermittent fasting work? This is a question that I'm seeing coming up more and more as popularity for intermittent fasting goes uh, or grows in the fitness community. You'll see there's several, um, you know, celebrities that have done it. I think uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson experimented with intermittent fasting. Mike Vicani, who we, uh, we recommend his videos a lot. He, I know he does intermittent fasting. I have experimented with intermittent fasting. Um, you know, first, a lot of you may not even know what intermittent fasting is. And basically, it's, you know, there's several different ways to do it. And you can Google intermittent fasting and you're going to see a ton of, um, a ton of articles. Some of them worshiping intermittent fasting. Some of them, you know, on the complete opposite side of that, just fear mongering about intermittent fasting. And you'll probably find everything in between. Um, you know, what intermittent fasting is, basically, you're having a window where you don't eat, a very large window, the majority of your day where you don't eat, and then a small eating window. So when I experimented with it, I did from um, 9 p.m. to 1 p.m. I did not eat, so I had a 16-hour fasting window. I worked out around noon, and then after my workout, my post-workout meal was my biggest meal, uh, but I had an 8-hour eating window. So... Um, 
you know, it, it's, it doesn't, intermittent fasting, I will say this, that intermittent fasting is not a guarantee to success, all right? More importantly than intermittent fasting is going to be your workouts, what you're eating, um, and the amount of your calorie deficit. Um, and then also rest is going to play an important part of your results. So don't look for intermittent fasting to be this magical new thing that's came out that's going to solve all your problems. It's just not true. You're still going to have to stick to the basics, nutrition, workouts, rest. If you do those things, you're going to see success. Intermittent fasting is more about does it fit in your lifestyle? Do those 16 hours of night eating fit in your lifestyle? You might be somebody who works an incredible amount and just has no time for breaks, no time for lunch, uh, maybe no time for breakfast. And you have to eat after you get home. If that's the case, then intermittent fasting may work for you as long as you know you feel like you have energy and your body functions on that 16-hour fast. Then I would say intermittent fasting is probably a great tool for you if you're wanting to lose weight. Um, I don't think there's any any harm with it. Um, you know, there's been several studies that have came out um, supporting intermittent fasting. I know there's a study in 2007. There's been some studies in 2014. There's been studies on animals showing that it reverses illness uh, or some illnesses. There's been, you know, studies on humans um, that it improves insulin sensitivity, improves uh, or increases growth hormone, improves cognitive ability. Um, but there's not a whole lot of scientific backing to that. So, you know, I think it can be a good tool, but I don't think it's this magical answer that everyone acts like it is. Um, when I experimented with intermittent fasting, I broke through a plateau. It helped me break through a plateau and I felt great while doing it. My lifestyle just adjusted and I got to a point where I didn't feel like I was functioning very well on 16 hours of not eating. And, um, and so I, I stopped. I went back and I didn't notice any um, more fat loss than normal because of intermittent fasting. I mean, I was still at a calorie deficit, so that was why I was losing weight. Um, it also led me to believe that I really don't think there's a lot of validity to timing of meals. You hear a lot of um, a lot of people, especially a few years ago, this was thought to be a you know fitness norm that you had to eat five to six meals a day to lose weight and to increase your metabolism. And I really think that's crap. I do not think it matters how many times a day you are eating. Um, I think whether you eat once a day, three times a day, or six times a day, whether you're at a calorie deficit or not is going to determine whether you're losing weight or not, not the frequency of your meals. And I found that very true with intermittent fasting. So, you know, I would say, again, it's not a magical answer. It could help you. It may make you feel worse. Everybody is an individual. So, um, if, if you think it might fit your lifestyle, try it out. And if it works and if you're seeing results and you like it and you feel great and your body's reacting, then do it. I don't think there's any harm to it. All right. Um, let's see. Let's give some shout outs. Uh, Lisa Boyer. So I asked the question how much, I, I phrased the question on the boot camp sheets wrong this week. Um, usually I say how much weight did you lose in the first two weeks of boot camp and I think I actually accidentally typed out how much did you lose in week two. So I'm not sure if this is for the first two weeks or um, some of you guys specified because you knew I messed up but some of you didn't. So um, I've got a couple shout outs here. Lisa Boyer uh, Karolski lost seven pounds. I think that's for two weeks, but I'm not positive. Fred Riley is down 8.5 pounds. Uh, Sheila Gerber, she specified she lost 3.5 pounds in week two of boot camp. That's an awesome. Angela uh, Freegan has, is down 8.2, and I know that's for two weeks. Swati is down 9.6 pounds in two weeks. Kayla Stick lost five. Aaron Jones lost five. Um, Jack. Uh, Bauer, I can't read my own handwriting, lost eight, and Tim Kern lost six. So amazing job, guys. Um, three people in our boot camp put up that they didn't lose any weight. And so what I like to do is go and see if there's any common denominators with all those people that didn't lose any weight because with boot camp, you know, we know the process works and, and we've put over a thousand people through it and they've all lost weight. So when somebody's not losing weight, I have to figure out what's not working for them. Why aren't they losing weight? So 
The, the thing I saw at all three of you who answered you didn't lose weight, and this happened last boot camp too, you either answered you're not working out five to six days a week, or you're all doing your own thing, meaning your own workout program. Um, and hey, I applaud you for doing your own thing and, and working out, um, and maybe you know a Beachbody program is not in your budget, but what I would recommend that you do is put $5 a week away until you have money for a Beachbody program because the Beachbody programs, there's a lot of science that went into them. They're going to teach you um, what muscle groups to work, when to work them, how much rest to give them, and how hard to work them. It is crucial. It's so hard to do this on your own. Um, can it be done on your own? Yeah, it can be done on your own, but it's a lot harder and, and, and the results are just not going to be as fast because you don't have the knowledge and the experience to do it. Um, so take advice from an expert who has actually like put science behind these programs and invest in yourself and invest in a program that, you know, even, even programs, you got programs as little as $40. They're going to help you tremendously. They're going to push you, um, and you're going to get results. And if you don't get results, the best thing is you can send that program back and get all your money back. So there's zero risk, but, um, you know, everybody that does these programs, loses weight. That's why we love them. That's why we became coaches because we know they work. Um, and then the other, the couple of you said you weren't working out five to six days a week. So I want you to recognize the fact that we set the calorie goals up with the expectation that you were going to work out five to six days a week. So if you're not working out five to six days a week, your expenditure is not what we calculated it at. Um, so you're not, you're not expending as many calories that means your calorie deficit is not as big and you're not going to be losing as much weight. So you need to be working out five to six days a week if you're going to go by our recommendation in the boot camp. Okay? Um, question of the day. Last question. Uh, last week we had a question. Um, where would your dream vacation be? This week I want to know what is your favorite vacation spot you've been to? That's what I want to know because I need places to travel. So... Um, let's hear it. What is the best vacation you have ever taken? All right, guys, have a wonderful week and we will talk to you later.